Hi folks, this is Donald. Now, regular viewers to this channel will know that I've been going on and on about fountain pen usage for sketching. It's something I've really got into recently. And when I started sketching with fountain pens, I was speculating what it might be like to sketch with a fancier pen. What would be the difference, if any? Well, today I'm going to get the chance to find out because this is the Lamy Scala. And the reason I have this pen is because the lovely people at penheaven.co.uk got in touch with me and asked me if I would like to try out a pen. And they gave me free rein to choose whatever pen I wanted, up to a certain price point, obviously. And this is the one I chose because I I've been loving the Lamy Safari, the cheap and cheerful plastic baby brother of this one. And the Lamy Scala is much more expensive and much higher up in the range. So I thought this is a perfect opportunity to try a pen that I have been longingly admiring from afar. Now I should make it very clear that they had absolutely no editorial influence on this video whatsoever. Everything in this video is my genuine unbiased opinion. But before I get into the pen, I should just say that this is a scene in Glasgow that I'm sketching, Glasgow, Scotland. It is actually a coffee shop and right in the centre of the city. It's a very unusual building. I don't know what its history is. It can't have always been a coffee shop. It's quite a striking building. I thought this would be perfect for me. This is my sort of building to sketch. Lots and lots of detail to get carried away with. Nice and wonky lines, as I always do. And just like in my previous sketch that I did, I did no pencil planning. I just went straight in with the ink. No going back. No room for error. So what can I say about the Lamy Scala? Well, it is an all metal fountain pen and I'm using an extra fine nib. And one of the things I love about Lamy pens is that the nibs are interchangeable. So I have a bunch of nibs, medium, fine and extra fine, and I can easily just clip one nib off and put on the other one. The same system that works for the Lamy Safari works for this. So you can just switch over the nib and you're ready to go. So I put on the extra fine nib onto this one and I was getting a nice smooth fine line out of it. But of course I can get the same fine nib line out of the Lamy Safari, which only costs £20, whereas this one costs about 75 So what is the difference? What are you paying for? Well, I think you're paying for the build quality and you're paying for the way it feels to draw with it. I have to say I love the way this pen feels. It's really smooth and yet it's not slippy. And I was trying to find out more information about this because I'm really sad. I seem to spend more time reading about fountain pens online than I do actually drawing with them. But there's not an awful lot online. All I could find out about it, this pen was that it was made in a vacuum rather than pressed. And what that actually means, I have no idea. I couldn't find any more information than that. They've gone to the extent of making it in a vacuum. So there must be a good reason for that. Maybe it's a dust-free environment so you can get a perfect finish on the black matte exterior. Maybe it's that. Not totally sure. But whatever they've done, it seems to have worked because this is really quite a different experience to drawing with a Lamy Safari, even though it is essentially a fountain pen from the same manufacturer with the same type of nib. This just feels much nicer to hold. I can't even imagine how long it must have taken them to design that in a way that the weight is so perfectly balanced. The Lamy Safari is a brilliant everyday pen and I'm not going to stop using it because it's just a, such a fun pen to use. But this just feels a bit more like... I don't know, sketching like a grown-up. It's a difficult thing to explain un until you try drawing with such an item, but given that I spent the majority of the time that I've been sketching, I've been using cheapy fine liners, to suddenly be drawing with something that is like a 75-80 pound pen is quite bizarre, but I'm loving the experience. And the only way up from this, I suppose, is to then be looking at the fountain pens that cost hundreds. And I know one of my favourite urban sketchers, Alex Hilkertz, he uses a Faber-Castell von Graff, I think they're called, and they're hundreds. So I don't know what you get going to that level, but let's speculate again and who knows, maybe someone will send one out. And I haven't talked much about the drawing because I've spent so much time rambling on about this pen, but this was a really fun drawing to do because there was so much detail and I do love getting carried away with these sorts of buildings that you can just spend ages getting lost in all the wobbly lines and wonky windows and all that fun stuff. But because I didn't do any pencil lines, I did find that I'd drawn it a little bit too big. I would have preferred, if I was going to draw the building this size, I should have used a bigger pad. But of course, you don't know that until you have drawn it because there's no pencil lines to guide you. It's the tricky part of trying to draw this way. Lamy do send out an ink cartridge with all of their pens. It contains blue ink, but it's not 
waterproof ink, so I didn't use that. Of course, because I wasn't putting watercolour on this, I could have used the blue ink cartridge, but I wanted to try it out with the ink that I normally use to see how that would get on with the pen. I'm using the Diatramentis document ink, which is waterproof, and I've put it into the converter that you can also get for this pen. And then you just dip the pen in the ink, twist the little nozzle that's on the converter, and then it just sucks the ink up into the pen and you're good to go. And it is also a fountain pen ink, so it's not going to clog up the inside of the pen, which is particularly important once you're getting into the territory of using more expensive pens. You certainly don't want to be ruining them by putting in the wrong type of ink. And so far the Diatramentis, have, I've had absolutely no problems. It flows very smoothly and this pen seems to be loving it. They're getting on really well. And because I'm drawing on Bristol board, the pen is just gliding over the surface. I did draw the roof line on the left side of considerably more warped than it is in reality. That wasn't entirely intentional. It just always seems to be the way these sketches turn out. As ever, I have really no interest in perspective. It's just about what comes out on the page. And when you're drawing freely with no pencil marks to guide you, you just go with however it comes out. And I really am enjoying that aspect of it. It seems to be warping my wobbly line sketches even more than it was previously. And it's also so unpredictable. I've really no idea where these sketches are going at the moment when I've no plan to stick to. So yeah, thanks to penheaven.co.uk for sending out the pen to try out. Is it worth the upgrade from a Lamy Safari? I'm going to say yes, simply because you, you can tell how much effort the designers have gone to to make something that feels real quality and is just beautiful to draw with. And also, let's be honest, it just looks cool. It made me feel a little bit more posh and important, which, which is certainly not something that I've ever been accused of. And if you'd like to see more sketching inspiration like this, you can click on this video right here and I will see you in the next one.